Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to our literature class. Welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a very, very interesting, we're going to be analyzing a very interesting poem today. A very wonderful and lovely poem titled The Leader and the Led by Ni Oshundare. The Leader and the Led by Ni Oshundare. It is an African poem. So it's under the, under the group of African poetry. Now, behavioral objectives. At the end of the lesson, we're going to be learning the background of the poet and the background of the poem, summary and subject matter of the poem, poetic devices employed in the poem, and the use of imagery and symbolism in the poem. Now, background of the poet. Oluwani Oshundare was born in 1947. He studied B.Ed. in English in the University of Ibadan in 1972, Masters in English in the University of Leeds, England in 1974, his PhD in English in the University of Toronto, Canada in 1979, and became a lecturer after that. His works often combine the Yoruba culture and the Marxist approach, which you, while using mythology to speak on social injustice. This is a brief background of the poet Oluwa Niyi Oshundare, also known as, or popularly known as Niyi Oshundare. Now, background of the poem and the setting as well. The poem focuses on the politicians and their quest for power and leadership in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. It also presents the relationship between the leaders and their followers. The geographical setting of the poem is a forest in Nigeria. While physically, it was set during the time of power tussle and desperate quest for power by the politicians in Nigeria. Now, let's read the poem itself. The lion stakes his claim to the leadership of the pack, but the antelopes remember the ferocious palms of his paws. The hyena says the crown is made for him. But the impalas shudder at his lethal appetite. The giraffe craves a place in the front, but his eyes are too far from the ground. When the zebra says it's his right to lead, the pack points to the duplicity of his stripes. The elephant trudges into the power tussle, but its colleagues dread his trampling feet. The war thug is too ugly. The rhino to Ayosha's, and the park trashes around like a snake without a head. Our need calls for a hybrid of habits, proclaims the forest sage. A little bit of a lion, a little bit of a man. Tough like a tiger, compassionate like a dog, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. A leader who knows how to follow, followers mindful of their right to lead. Now, this is the poem, The Leader and the Led by Ni Oshundari. Now, let's analyze the poem itself. Lines 1 to 8. The lion stakes his claim to the leadership of the pack. The pack here represents Nigeria or Africa as a whole, the African nations. The antelopes refuse. The antelopes represent the followers because they believe that a leader should not feed on his subjects. So they eliminate the lion from the race. The hyena stakes claim to the throne, but the impalas disagree on grounds of the hyena's brutality and little appetite. They believe a leader should not oppress his subjects, should not be able to instill fear and be very brutal and lethal in their administration so they disqualify the hyena the giraffe tries his luck but no no one believes that the giraffe should lead because the giraffe's neck is too long and he will not be able to see his followers so the lion here represents some leaders that are very ferocious those who feed on their subjects suck their subjects dry take from them and don't give them so they don't want such leader the hyena represent leaders that are very brutal and little, like the military regime. They do not want people who rule with tight fists and who are very harsh and cruel. 
because they don't want people that will oppress them. The giraffe is disqualified. The giraffe is a typical political aspirant whose head is above the clouds. He doesn't care about his people. He's always, he doesn't see what is happening to the people because he doesn't want to come down from that high horse. So the giraffe is disqualified in lines one to eight. Now, in lines nine to 14, we see the zebra staking his claim, but he's disqualified because of his crookedness and double dealings as shown in the duplicity of his stripes. His double dealings. The zebra has double stripes, many stripes. So they believe that the zebra is a kind of leader that will always deal in one place and say a different thing in another place. He is crooked. He's not straightforward. He, whatever it is he says, he will not defend it later. He can deny it. People don't want leaders like that. The elephant decides to run, but everybody's like, you have a trampling feet. No citizen wants to be crushed under your big foot. Now, the elephant here represents leaders that are leaders that feel they are too big. Leaders that feel they have it all and then they can walk on their followers. They can trample on the followers. They don't care about them. The wolf dog is disqualified because they believe he's too ugly. He will not present, he will not represent them well when they go out. When they go out for international functions, the wolf dog will not represent them well. So the wolf dog represents a leader who is not um, qualified based on his appearance. Why the rhinoceros is also disqualified because of his rowdy persona. He's too rowdy, he's disorganized, he's always scattered. You know, any very little thing can just make him make rash decisions. They are scared of leaders like that, so the rhinoceros is disqualified. The pack is unable to choose a leader, and so they become very unsteady. The forest sage, the advisor, begins to tell them that they need a leader with a hybrid of habitats, of habits, sorry, a hybrid of habits, meaning a leader that has the qualities of every single person here that have been disqualified, the qualities of every person. The forest sage also stated that they need a leader who knew how to secure legitimacy and a leader that can also respect their opinions, listen to their opinion. So that's the kind of leader the sage is trying to explain to them that they need, a leader that thinks about them, respects them, and understands them very well. So that's what the poem, the leader and the learned is talking about. It's showing us the various processes of elections and how candidates are eliminated and on what grounds they are eliminated. Now we're going to be looking at the poetic devices. Poetic devices in the poem. The first one is the language. The poem uses a great deal of satire. Satire reveals the ills of the society with the main aim of correcting them. So the poet uses these to relate to animals to achieve this purpose. The animals in the poem are human beings and their leadership structure. So we are seeing the leadership styles of each animal. So they represent human beings. So the poet uses animals to show us what happens in the typical electoral process, how candidates are eliminated and why they are eliminated, reasons why they are eliminated. Now, another poetic device is the mood or tone of the writer. The tone is that of awe and that of mirth. And then there is a mood of fright at the beginning. The poet is scared with the kind of candidates that are coming in. However, at the end of the poem, there is a mood of hope because the sage has given us and the the characteristics or the qualities of the leader we need. So everybody will have to go back and think: Is there anybody that has a hybrid of all these habits that can actually rule them and rule them diligently and efficiently? Yes. So these are the um, poetic devices in the leader and the led by me or now we'll be looking at the figures of speech the figures of speech in the poem the me um, leader and the led by me or the first figure of speech is metaphor where we can see in lines 19 and 20 a little bit of a lion a little bit of a lamb where they are comparing the leader they need to be a little bit of a lion and a little bit of a lamb humble and courageous as well another figure of speech is simile in line 16 like a snake without a head and lines 21 and 22 tough like a tiger compassionate like a doe transparent like a river mysterious like a lake another figure of speech is neck the key to neck the key here where we're using a part to represent a whole the paws here represent the lion's predatory violence. The eyes in line 8 represent the accessibility of the giraffe to his subjects and the masses. Stripes in line 10 stands for the probable dishonesty of the 
zebra. That's examples of synecdoche in the poem. Another figure of speech is paradox. 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 We can see in line 21, tough like a tiger, compassionate like a dove. Line 22, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. And then we have another figure of speech, which is parallelism, where we have lines 19 to 20, a little bit of a lion, a little bit of a lamb. Lines 21 to 22, tough like a tiger, compassionate like a dove. Lines 21 to 22, tough like a tiger, compassionate like a dove. Transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. Now, we're going to the use of imagery and symbolism in the poem. The use of imagery and symbolism in the poem. The first one is imagery. The dominant imagery used in the poem is animal or pastoral imagery. That's use of animals to convey, um, to pass a message. The imagery conveys strife and tussle. Such words such as pounds, paws, lethal appetite, trampling, water, all create ferocious imagery in the minds of the reader. So we can see they've used certain words to describe the the qualities of the animals who are coming out for leadership positions. So these are the words that I often use to describe human beings when they are vying for political positions in a typical society. Now, symbolism. Symbolism, the entire tale, its actors on the quest for a leader, represents human experiences in the contemporary world. The electioneering process, campaigns and elections, they're showing us everything that goes on in the electoral world. The lion and hyena represent oppressive forces, those people who are very oppressive. Their job is to oppress the people and make them do their biddings. The antelope and the impalas are the op oppressed. They are the people, the people that feel the brunt of these oppressive leaders. The zebra stands for crooked leaders, while giraffe leaders who have are leaders who distance themselves from the masses. The giraffe are types of leaders that distance themselves from the masses. They are far away, so they don't see what the masses are going through. Park in lines 2, 10, and 15 are used to depict Africa and Nigeria. Why the sage in the poem is used as the voice of wisdom. Yes, yeah, so we have come to the end of the summary and analysis of the poem, as well as the poetic devices and figures of speech. So we'll be doing a little bit of evaluation. Our evaluation, number one, examine the use of alliteration in the poem. Number two, how did Oshundare use symbolism to create an effect in the reader's mind? Yes, so do these two questions. So we've come to the end of our beautiful analysis of the poem, The Leader and the Led by Ni Oshundari. So I'll be seeing you next time where we'll be discussing the themes and style of the poem, Leader and the Led by Ni Oshundari. All right, so take care. Bye.